40 crazy facts about music everyone should know. Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys had a grand piano installed in a sandbox in his living room. He believed the sand helped him connect with the beach and surf culture that inspired his music. Marvin Gaye was tragically shot and killed by his father on April 1, 1984, following a heated argument. The incident shocked the music world and marked a devastating end to the life of the soul legend. Keith Richards had a life-threatening accident when he fell out of a coconut tree whilst on vacation in Fiji in 2006. The accident resulted in a skull fracture and an enormous brain bleed that required surgery. In 1992, Madonna released a coffee table book called S which contained explicit photographs and essays exploring sexual fantasies and taboos. A lock of Elvis Presley's hair was sold at auction in 2002 for $115,000. The hair had been collected by his personal barber. Sting sang the intro and backup vocals on Dire Straits' Money for Nothing. The I Want My MTV intro is set to the tune of Don't Stand So Close to Me. Mickey Dolenz, vocalist and drummer for The Monkees, and renowned member of the Hollywood Vampires Drinking Club, was also the voice for Snuggle the Fabric Softener Bear. The Pearl Jam song Alive, written by Eddie Vedder, is loosely based on the fact that he learned the man who he thought was his real father was actually his stepfather, and his biological father had already passed away. In January 1996, Jimmy Buffett's airplane was shot at by Jamaican police, who believed the craft to be smuggling marijuana. The plane was carrying Buffett, Bono, and his family. The Jamaican government acknowledged the mistake and apologized to Buffett. He went on to write a song about the experience and called it Jamaica Mistaka. David Lee Roth, frontman of Van Halen in the early 80s, paid his road crew $100 for every woman they brought him backstage. At the height of the Grateful Dead's touring years, Jerry Garcia was using $1,800, adjusted for inflation, worth of drugs per day. In 1995, Oasis released a single called Wibbling Rivalry, which featured only audio of Noel and Liam Gallagher arguing during an interview. It charted at number 52 on the British Singles Chart. Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys wrote California Girls during his first experience with LSD. He sat in front of a piano and played what are now the first four notes of the song over and over again for about an hour, until the rest of the song suddenly came to him. Former Husker Du guitarist and singer Bob Mould briefly wrote scripts for World Championship Wrestling in 1999 and 2000. But wait, what do they need scripts for? I thought wrestling was real. The reason Sting laughs during the intro to Roxanne is because he took a step back before he started singing and did a butt chord on a piano behind him. The take was a keeper, so they kept everything. If you listen close, you can hear the chord. David Lee Roth, frontman of Van Halen, and adult film star Kieran Lee had their d insured for more than one million each, underwritten by Lloyds of London, who have also insured the vocal cords of Bruce Springsteen. Rolling Stones founder Brian Jones had four children before he turned 20, two of them before he was 18. Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins is the owner and president of the National Wrestling Alliance. Steven Van Zandt, guitarist with Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, originally auditioned for the lead role of Tony in The Sopranos. HBO didn't think he would work as a lead since he never acted before, so creator David Chase wrote him Silvio Dante, a character that Steven had created. Tom Fogarty, rhythm guitarist of Creedence Clearwater Revival and brother of John Fogarty, contracted HIV from an unscreened blood transfusion following back surgery in the 1980s and died of HIV-complicated TB in 1990. Keith Emerson of Emerson, Lake and Palmer improvised the synthesizer solo in Lucky Man, but it was so improvised that Emerson forgot how to play it and he had to call Keyboard Magazine to ask for a transcription of the solo. As a youngster, David Byrne of Talking Heads was once mistaken for Norman Bates, which eventually inspired Byrne when creating the song Psycho Killer. Grateful Dead concerts were so crucial to the LSD market that Jerry Garcia's death in 1995 contributed to a nationwide decline in LSD use. While on tour in Germany in 2002, Liam Gallagher and his bodyguards were beaten up. They claimed it was the Russian mob. It was actually a group of estate agents. Russell Crowe commissioned Nick Cave to write a sequel to Gladiator. When Cave asked, didn't you die at the end of Gladiator? Crowe responded, yeah, but you sort that out. So Cave went ahead and wrote a draft script for Gladiator 2 in which Max 
Maximus is resurrected for eternity, sent to kill Jesus Christ and his disciples, fights in the Crusades, World War II, and Vietnam, and works at the Pentagon in the present day. The script was rejected and scrapped. Alice Cooper, the band, broke up in the 70s, at which point their frontman adopted the name Alice Cooper for his solo career. Since the Alice Cooper name is registered to the band, Alice Cooper pays the old members of Alice Cooper an annual royalty to use the name Alice Cooper. During the recording of the Rolling Stones album Beggar's Banquet, Brian Jones would sometimes come to recording sessions and want to play completely irrelevant music. The producer would put him in an isolated booth and simply not record his playing onto any important track. Ozzy Osbourne gave up taking acid during the recording of Black Sabbath's Volume 4. He said, I took 10 tabs of acid then went for a walk in a field. I ended up standing there talking to this horse for about an hour. In the end the horse turned round and told me to f*** off. That was it for me. When the Grateful Dead played Playboy After Dark in 1969, the band's LSD supplier Bear dosed the coffee urn that everyone on set was drinking from, including Hugh Hefner. Hefner later wrote a letter to Jerry Garcia thanking the band for the enjoyable experience. Richie Blackmore, the iconic lead guitar player of Deep Purple, has spent the past 20 years releasing nine albums with his wife of medieval folk music. Lemmy Kilmister of Motorhead loved to play a particular arcade game at his local bar. When he found out he was terminal ill, the bar owner brought the game machine to Lemmy's apartment so he could keep playing it at home. The arcade game was the 1981 Atari classic, Tempest. Jane Weedlin of the Go-Go's played Joan of Arc in the movie, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. In 1980, Don Henley had police called to a party at his house where a 16-year-old girl was found, and a 15-year-old girl was arrested for being under the influence of drugs. Henley was arrested and subsequently charged for contributing to the delinquency of a minor. He pled no contest. He was given only a $2,500 fine and two years probation. Talk about dirty laundry. Oasis didn't take part in the making of the soundtrack for the British 90s film Train Spotting because Noel Gallagher thought the film was about actual train spotters. The BBC at first refused to play the Who's My Generation to avoid offending stutterers, though many reasons have been given for the stutter, from trying to sound like a mod on speed to making people think he was about to say F off. Roger Daltrey said he was just unrehearsed and nervous. Otis Redding recorded, sitting on the dock of the bay 72 hours before dying in a plane crash, never knowing it would be a number one hit and Grammy winner. Morrissey's autobiography was published under the Penguin Classics imprint, despite the book not being a literary classic. Morrissey demanded that Penguin Books publish the book as a Penguin Classic and threatened to find a new publisher when they said no. In the 90s, after Talking Heads broke up, the remaining members formed The Heads and released an album titled No Talking Just Head. David Byrne sued his former bandmates for being too evocative of the Talking Heads brand. The Animals broke up because, while touring in Japan in 1968, their manager was kidnapped by the tour promoters, who were Yakuza, and put him up for ransom. After the manager escaped, the band was forced to flee the country, or be killed by the Yakuza, leaving all of their tour gear behind. Frank Zappa once told Alice Cooper to come audition for his record label at 7 o'clock. Alice Cooper misunderstood and showed up at 7 a.m., which impressed Frank Zappa enough to sign them to a three-album deal. Keith Moon of The Who and Hollywood's Steve McQueen were once neighbors in Malibu. Their relationship soured after Moon came to McQueen's house once, broke in, got bit by McQueen's dog, and bit the dog back. The conflict stopped after McQueen blew out a light that Moon kept on to annoy him with a shotgun. One of The Clash's most famous songs, I Fought the Law, is actually a cover and was originally recorded by Sonny Curtis in 1959 when he joined the Crickets after taking the place of Buddy Holly on guitar. Rock icon Dwayne Allman only started playing guitar at 14, slide guitar at 22, and tragically died at 24 in a motorcycle crash. In 2003, he was ranked number two in Rolling Stone magazine's list of the 100 greatest guitarists of all time, second only to Jimi Hendrix.